<laughs> All right, so I have the pleasure of doing uh, the reputation of Dylan Ronella's speech, which his main claim was America, America's need for higher education will send the economy into a recession. I uh, agree with this, but uh, as far as his key points, um, which were student loans are at an all time high, America's view on having to get a second degree. I'm sorry, uh, receiving a postgraduate degree does not assure them a job, and then also the um, America's Want for Education has led to an unregulated market for student loans. So uh, I agree with all these points as well. It's just some of the uh, facts are a little off, I feel like. So uh, his first point in the uh, student loans are at an all-time high. He says that uh, 2014 was the most indebted ever, which is true. Uh, the average, though, $42,000 in debt is incorrect. The average for an undergraduate student is actually $33,000, uh, according to college.usa.com. 70% uh, of BA recipients do have student loans. Uh, that is true for both 2013 and 2014. And then he also goes on to say that the average person, uh, the average student, excuse me, uh, pays off their loans in about 13 years or so. Uh, the article that he uses for this point is an article from 2007. Now, if these people, you know, if they're getting postgraduate degrees or anything that has to do with that, uh, these people are, you know, going to school from their late 1990s and early 2000s, so that's really an irrelevant uh, article to use. So the next point would be the receiving a postgraduate degree does not assure them a job. He uses an article uh, called What Do Postgraduates Do? Uh, to talk about how the devastating numbers of 17.4% of postgraduates found themselves unemployed or holding a job that, doesn't, uh, that only needs a bachelor's. This article was written in 2005, so once again, that's irrelevant. And um, he also stated that an average is $50,000 in debt added to you once you go to a postgraduate degree. Uh, the numbers really vary, 50000 being the high side, so they can vary from anywhere from $10,000 to $50,000. And then the average graduate student debt acquired through a student's career is $43,524, and that was in 2011 uh, from independent.co.uk. Uh, and the final point, America's want for more education has led to an unregulated market for student loans. I uh, fully agree with this. I didn't have any problems with this one, actually. Uh, it's a little theoretical, though, whereas it's not proven, necessarily. Uh, but it does show promise to be true, uh, whereas uh, the student loans default due to the lack of students being able to pay them. And so the U.S. economy would I think you missed the point of the assignment. Oh. Yeah, because, you know, imagine yourself as the defense attorney. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, I agree with the prosecutor that my client is guilty, but let me show you that there are some problems with the evidence being presented. Uh, the prosecutor presented only three fingerprints to put my client at the position. There are actually four fingerprints. I mean, that's kind of the way your argument goes about. You've agreed with the advocate on every point. If you agree with everything, then there's no conflict. We're not having an argument. That's the first thing that we talked about the first week in class. You know, if you want to say that there's no argument here, that this is all a fact and there's no dispute on that, then you should say that. But uh, I, you really just kind of missed what it is that you're supposed to be doing. It's well organized. You follow the advocate's points pretty well. Um, I don't know the fact that there's a difference between 42000 and 33000 you know, that that $9,000 difference, why is that important? You know, it's, it's still a big chunk of money that people are ending up owing uh, when they get out of school. Um, 
you're dismissing evidence because it's um, like you said, uh, well, that's 2005. That's irrelevant. I'm going, well, why is it irrelevant? Because it might be irrelevant for the people who graduated in 2005 and only have three more years to have to pay off their uh, debt. But the people who are graduating this year and have 13 more years that they're going to be paying off their debt, why is this no longer true? You don't explain why it's no longer true. So, you know, just pointing out the date, I don't think does that kind of thing. I, I, I just got the feeling that you you sort of missed the point of the assignment and you, and you went at it and just said, well, here are a couple of points that I think are interesting and I'm going to talk about those as opposed to making this a refutation of the argument that's being presented. And as a consequence, it's a little bit sloppy, I'm afraid. All right. Thank you.